Harry took a little longer than usual to get out of bed Monday morning. He had spent most of the weekend celebrating his friend's upcoming marriage. The bachelor party that started Saturday afternoon never really ended until Sunday night. In a time period of almost 28 hours, Larry had drunk more beer, vodka, and sugary cordials than he'd had in a long time, and he'd gotten a lot less sleep than normal. At age 33, Larry had been a staff worker in a plumbing supply warehouse for almost eight years and was highly regarded for his work ethic and personality. This morning, he went into work with a nauseous stomach and a headache. The strong coffee in the staff lunchroom did little to make him feel better, but it was better than nothing. The first four hours in the warehouse were very busy, a normal Monday morning. Between moving pallets with the forklift, Larry helped pick orders and fill customer trucks. By lunchtime, he was foggy-headed and slightly dizzy, a condition he attributed to his hangover over, which was of course partly at fault, but it was made worse because in three and a half hours he'd had nothing more to drink than a few sips at the water fountain and was very dehydrated. Just before lunch, a flatbed semi-trailer arrived at the back lot for unloading. The managers considered Larry the best forklift operator and this truck had one of the more demanding loads that required the forklift operator to unload the bed using a spotter. 20-year-old Adrian was assigned to be a spotter for Larry. Adrian was fairly new and Larry had been training him in warehouse operations for the last two weeks. Larry drove a forklift out to the side of the flatbed trailer while Adrian walked behind. For 15 minutes, Larry lifted several bundles off the truck and moved them inside to a rack placed in the warehouse loading area. Moving almost on automatic, Larry was not even aware that his spotter was doing little more than watching him work. All Larry could think about was getting this truck unloaded, getting to lunch, and taking a nap on that big fat couch in the break room. As he lifted the second to the last load off the flatbed, he reversed a little too quickly, and the load shuddered and tilted to the left. Larry realized that the pallet was too far out on the forks, so he stopped and lowered them back down, which allowed him to get the forks placed securely under the load. After lifting the load, he backed up, quickly turning the wheel and lowering the load after it cleared the side of the truck. Driving away toward the warehouse entrance, he heard someone shouting behind him, but ignored it until he saw a co-worker run past him, yelling at him and pointing back where he had just been. Stop Larry turned around and saw someone lying on the ground. His first thought was the truck driver must have fallen, but then realized that it was his spotter, Adrian, and that the man bending over him was yelling for someone to call an ambulance. The post-accident investigation found that the spotter Adrian had been standing to the right rear of the forklift watching the unloading process. When Larry had stopped the forklift and moved forward to reposition the load, Adrian had walked behind the forklift, most likely to get a better view of what Larry was doing. Larry reversed without looking and did not see that Adrian had stopped for an unknown reason to turn around to look at something behind him. The forklift hit his back and he lost his balance and fell forward, striking his forehead on the ground. The force of the blow on the concrete lot knocked him unconscious. In the hospital, they were unable to reduce the swelling of his brain and he died three days later without ever awakening. The initial death investigation cited several possible factors contributing to the accident. The spotter was not paying attention to the forklift's movements. The forklift operator did not look in the direction the machine was moving. The forklift operator was distracted by thoughts of hurrying to lunch and was not paying full attention. Lack of sleep and operator dehydration may have also been factors. An accident results from a cascade of events and factors. In your opinion, what other events or factors contributed to this incident? And if you were investigating this incident, what questions would you ask? Mm -hmm.